We drop. We drop. We drop. We drop. It's cold out there. We drop. Alright. A serious, serious yeah. I'll Light. No. Alright. Deeper up in the house. We got the three the three graphs. Velocity versus time. Position versus time. And acceleration versus time right here. Yeah. And we can see that on every... On every graph, the time is on the x-axis. And it all goes up in seven intervals to 28 on each one. Yeah. And we got on this one, this first one, the velocity is in five intervals up to 0.7, which is the highest velocity. And, you know, we'll just start with that. Phase one. Velocity. Boom. Starts at zero, origin, because it's at rest. It's not moving. Therefore, it's not going anywhere. No velocity. Swag. After 14 meters... It has hit its maximum velocity, a.k.a. 0.67 meters per second, and starts going down until it hits 28 seconds, which is 19 meters. We calculated this up here using the equation change in distance equals one-half velocity times time, and that accounted for one section of the graph, oh, one triangle, and then we mul hey, and then again, again, we added this, both of them up to get oh our final God. velocity. With With this. On our yeah. position time graph, this it starts at zero I'm again, like right here at rest, and it goes up to a maximum of 19 meters. All right, we uh, didn't really have to use the equation for this because it was given. Um, the mouse trap car. Travels oh total of 19 meters, you know, <laughs> starting from rest. That's why it's here down at the origin. And uh, this is a nonlinear graph. And the y-axis is the distance. And it starts out with a slow velocity. Or not a slow velocity, but it starts out going slow. And then after it hits, what is that, 16 meters, it speeds up because the flag's perpendicular to the car. And somehow that pulls it faster. And ends up going 19 okay. meters. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, right here we got the acceleration graph. Um, the acceleration is calculated by final velocity minus initial velo uh, initial velocity, which is zero, all divided by final time minus initial time. No, cut that light. No. Um, and so the first acceleration is 0.67 over 14 which equals 0 0.024 meters per second squared. And then we did that again for the second acceleration because after the flag's already done, it starts slowing down and it ends up being the same except negative as told in the graph. But yeah, that all takes place in 28 seconds. Right here, you can pass that swag right there. Calculations done by T. Prude in the house. Okay, Patty's coming? That's the grass. What up, Patty? Patty? Uh, you're left. Okay, guys. First thing we're going to be talking yeah, yeah. about is oh, our yeah. free body yeah. diagram no, 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 and no. our forces. No, no, no. And <laughs> over fine. here, wrong like hand, over here, we got a free body diagram. Oh, okay, yeah. guys, here's the, the, the thing. I'm trying to talk. Okay? <laughs> Silence. Free body diagram over here. Oh, we got our force slow. normal, our force W, and our force friction, and our net no, force. Wait, no, I look like a man. Our force, uh, force W is the force of gravity, and that is equal to 2.3 newtons. And our force normal, same thing, 2.3 newtons. How we found that is we just got our weight Gosh. times that, you know, got 2.3 newtons. Cool stuff. And then to find our force friction over here, we got a, our force net is equal to mass times acceleration. So we got our mass. 0.23 kilograms times our acceleration was 0.024 and we got our force net to be 0 0.0052 so that's our free body diagram rocking it you know how we do cool over here hey over here we got our uh, force coefficient fun equation and that is force friction is equal to our weird U or our force coefficient times our force normal. 
And we knew already, because we saw them over here in our free body diagram, our force friction and our force normal. And those were 0 0.00552 and 2.3 <laughs> newtons, newtons. And then we plugged them into the fun equation, as you can see. You're going to get some seizure. So we got 0 0.00552 is equal to the unknown force coefficient times 2.3. Got some algebra skills going on, divided by 2.3 both sides, found our force coefficient 0 0.0024. Action, that means we quiet. T pro back in here. Alright, we got the energy bars. Close Yeah, it starts at rest, so the first bar is going to be an initial zero. Because it's not moving, there's no potential energy because it's not high, um, it uh, has no height. And then there's no kinetic energy because it ain't moving. Um, pretty much, alright, that's going to be the beginning, then slowly as it starts to build up speed, the kinetic energy is going to get higher and higher until it reaches its maximum, because work is being put out with that, and let's see, this is the equation we used, uh, start out with zero plus work equals KE, the zero doesn't do anything, so we just go work equals KE, work equals one half mass times velocity squared, you can't see that, so, moving that. Yep, all right. And then our mass is 0.23 kilograms, velocity 0.67 meters per second. Do some math and stuff there. Work, 0 0.52 joules. Thought I threw a one in there. I didn't, though. Good. Um, and because the work equals the Ke, the kinetic energy is also 0 0.052 joules. And... Anyways, after all the kinetic energy is used up because the friction slows down the car and there's no more work going because the mousetrap is not really doing it anymore, the initial energy bar, or the, not the initial, the final energy bar is going to be zero, just like the first one, because it's not going to be moving anymore, no potential and no kinetic energy. This is because the car has come to a complete stop because the friction from the rubbing of the wheels onto the floor, the linoleum floor, slowed the car down until if it came to complete stop because there was no work being put on it anymore. And this is all expressed in the law of conservation of energy. I'm done. Boom. Yay. It's still going. Uh, is it? Oh, I'm done now. Okay. So now we're going to talk about momentum, and uh, momentum is equal, it's momentum is equal to mass times velocity, and you know, the coefficient for momentum is P, so it's P equals MV, and uh, we already knew our uh, mass, we knew our velocity, we calculated it earlier, so we just plugged it in, so we plugged in P is equal to 0.23 times 0.67, and we came up to... Momentum is equal to 0 0.1541 watts. And I just did a quick explaining here. Every object that is moving has some amount of momentum. The greater the mass of the moving object, the greater the momentum. The more momentum an object has results in it being harder to stop. Boom. Goes the dynamite. Okay. Last thing we're talking about are power and impulse. And power is the rate in which energy is transferred. And the equation for that is power is equal to work divided by change in time. And our work equations over there, work is equal to force times distance, or W equals F delta D. We plugged all that in, and we got work to equal to 0 0.10488. And then we plugged that into our power equation. So power is equal to 0 0.10488. Divided by 28 seconds, and 28 seconds is the time it took for our car to do its run. And then uh, we plugged into the calculator, and we got our power to equal 0 0.00375 watts. And now impulse. Impulse is the force acting during a period of time. Impulse is equal to change in momentum, so it was J equals F delta T. So we plug that in and we got J is equal to 0 0.00552 times 28 seconds. And then we plug that in and got J is equal to 0 0.15456 kilograms per meters per second. Done.
We drop. Efficient times force normal. So FF is equal to weird U times FN. Down here. Oh shit, dude. What? This is Mirage. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, man. Oh my god.